All right, well, welcome to uh, Prepper Talk Radio here on this Friday afternoon. Booyah. We are happy to be back again, yet again on a Friday. It's uh, our indication of that this is the weekend, and it's a good start for us for the weekend. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, trying to do my prep uh, either Thursday night or a little bit Friday morning, and every time I prep, I realize or I discover how much I really don't know on the subject we want to talk about. Well, it's funny because um, I start my prep at the beginning of the week mm-hmm. when we double check and everything, um, and then we kind of shifted this week. So I'm like, mm-hmm. last night I was scrambling a little bit to make sure I had the right information. But uh, you know, feel free to call in today. We're going to have a lot of different things we're going to talk about. But uh, feel free to call in. We've actually got our good buddy Cash Valley Prepper who's who's listening right now. Sweet. He may be he may be calling in. But the number to call in is eight zero one two five four. 1640 to join in with Prepper Talk Radio, all things preparedness, radio for the ready-minded. And the cool thing today is we're going to be talking our final segment on guns. But before we get in that, let's talk a little bit about the hindrance, I guess you'd say, of, of things that have happened. Uh, yeah, I think uh, what we were talking before, about before the show, and you know, one thing I try and keep my, my thumb on a little bit is... Uh, the very, very, the very, very first thing we talked about on our very first show. Do you remember you what that was? You keep your pulse on just that item? I do. Just that one item. Well, that's it. That's it. No. That's it. That's one of the many things one I of the keep many. trying to keep. So but you keep your pulse on what's going on in the world. Our first show, we actually yes. talked about Fukushima because that was yes. recent. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was uh, actually um, by one of our callers called in and, hey, should I be concerned about radiation and such? And, wow, what a fantastic question that was. So, yes, that's, that's something that I... That was brought to my attention, I would think, uh, it was probably mid-2013, mm-hmm. uh, and it actually happened a few years before then. So that what Fukushima is, it was uh, the nuclear power plant in Japan, Fukushima, Japan, mm-hmm. that was hit by the tsunami. Well, the reason it became such a big topic that, that week for us when we first started out was because the radiation effects were finally being felt on the Pacific coast. They were actually starting to reach, yeah, yeah. after a couple and, of years. And that's what sparked those conversations, and, and what's happening today well it's continuing to be a problem yeah and you hear nothing in the news about it uh and that's why wait let's correct that okay. you hear nothing on the mainstream on the mainstream news. News. yes perfect thank you these small channels the independent yes. radio stations the independent newspapers are still talking about mm-hmm. them. they are and they d- continue to put out reports although the information is kind of few and far between and vague because of laws that they have actually set that they cannot dis- disseminate uh some of this information because it can cause a panic. And that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to cause a panic. We want you to be aware and prepared. So essentially the latest news is not much has changed. Uh, the, the reactors continue to uh, essentially dump radiation into the ocean mm-hmm. about at about 400 tons per day Wow! into the ocean. And the pools are being cooled by... The, by TEPCO pumping water through these and then storing that on land in tanks. And eventually they're going to run out of space and have to release that. And that's what they are actually preparing everybody for is, hey, we're going to release this into the ocean because we've got no other option. Oh my gosh. So the latest development this week, and I don't want to go into detail on this, I just want to make you all aware so that you can type Fukushima into your search engines and learn a little bit more about it if you don't already know what Fukushima is, that they, after all this time, and I forget how many years it's been, they have just barely been able to get a, some video or get some pictures of the actual fuel on the bottom of the reactor floors. It's been all this time that they have not been able to figure out how to get a machine in there to take video because of the radiation is so high. So they're actually able to get some, some pictures, some video of, this, of the fuel on the floor, and now they can start to figure out how to get it out. Oh, my gosh. And that's going to take at least three years before they can start. So it's five years later. At least, They're just yeah. now getting able to take pictures, yep. and it'll be another at least three another years three years before, before they can even start. And wow. it'll probably take about forty years if they can even do it at all to get this nuclear f- fuel out so of there. Of all the, you can't see this, but I'm throwing up air quotes, mm-hmm. the bunny fingers. Of all the good things we do in the world and all the brilliant ideas we have, um, what is it really costing us? In this case, yep. this is it's costing the world. And there are lots of arguments for nuclear power mm-hmm. because. And I hesitate to say it because it's safe, but it's not. It's 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 safe until quotes, something like this safer happens. Safer and cleaner, air yes. quotes, right? Yep. Um, 
than say fossil fuel or, or yeah. whatever, more efficient than solar or, or whatever. But I think that the main thing is is that we live beyond our means in every aspect, financially as well as we don't need to live off so much energy. We don't need to we need to use so much, consume so much. Anyway, I don't want to go that go that route. Just wanted to bring up the word Fukushima to your minds. Go out there and and prepare. And one thing I did bring up in our very first show is I am continually taking an iodine supplement mm-hmm. so that my thyroid has good iodine in it because our nuclear or the radioactive material in the air, in the environment, has increased due mm-hmm. to Fukushima and lots of other events. Well, plus we live in a very radiological area anyway. So that too. Up high, high in the mountains of Utah. I mean, we've got radon, radon. in our homes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's radioactive. It's got a very short life cycle, but mm-hmm. it still affects you, right? Your office is in the basement, so it affects you. Yep. My office yep. is in my basement, so mm-hmm. it affects me. Um, so, yeah, definitely have something you can take to help with that. What do you take specifically? I, I just take a fairly inexpensive iodine supplement. I forget what it's called, but I just go down to the... You have to remember, to the, remember for next time. I just go down to Good Earth, and they've got a number of different iodine supplements. Pick one that's in your price range. And I think at least take something. I eat lots of iodized salt. There we go. Lots. It's important to have it's too much iodized salt, but too much salt. Too is much. Good. But, it's but salt is good. a great item to have in your preparedness, in your emergency preparedness supplies, your, along your food storage, and get the iodized too. No reason yeah. not to, right? So, so today, swinging back, gun slinging back to guns, right? Let, let's let's start off with that quote. I think it's such a good quote. Yeah, I think what we really wanted to talk about today is. We talk about handguns an awful lot. We talk about self-defense. Like last week, we were talking with Stan about close quarters, and typically that means handguns. There are other options, mm-hmm. and which we're not going to get into. Well, close quarters means no handguns. It means it keep be, your guns safe, knife, keep it away. Right. Um, there's different perimeter, param, you know, different radiuses around you. Uh-huh, remember the radius, ready radius, uh-huh. ready radius. There's different distances around you where it's applicable for different types of things. And so mm. today, we wanted to get into the different types of guns for preppers. But before that, we wanted mm-hmm. to talk about how that affects our mind. Yeah, and I think in general, our theme wants, we want to be talking about long guns, Mm -hmm. rifles in particular. I don't think we put enough emphasis on how important they truly are. So let me read this and and, uh, tell you exactly what Thomas Jefferson thought of the gun and how important it truly is. Okay, so here we go. See how I can read this. A strong body makes the mind strong. As to the species of exercise, I advise the gun. While this gives moderate ex- exercise to the body, it gives boldness, enterprise, and independence to the mind. Games played with a ball and others of that nature are too violent for the body and stamp no character on the mind. Let your gun, therefore, be your constant companion on your walks. Now, this was a letter uh, that Thomas Jefferson wrote to his nephew, Peter Carr. And it's the letter goes on and it's fantastic. And well, I think go, we'll get go a little further because the... the the long walk part, I okay. think, is very important for us. Yeah, I can read some more. Especially as preppers. Yeah, absolutely. And this could be a whole other sh- uh, topic for another show. Uh, the object of walking is to relax the mind. You should, therefore, not permit yourself even to think while you walk. But divert your attention away. But divert your attention by the objects surrounding you. Walking is the best possible exercise. Habituate yourself to walk very far. Hint, hint. Mm-hmm. The Europeans value themselves on having subdued the horse to the uses of man. But I doubt whether we have not lost more than we have gained by the use of this animal. No one has, no one has occasioned so much the de- degeneracy of the human body. Okay, that's what I wanted. Okay. Now, what is our horse today? The c- our car. The car. It's way worse. How many of us actually walk more than a mile a day? There's a thing I saw... Uh, last year when I was really, really out of shape. I'm doing better. Uh, but it said, on average, most Americans don't walk more than a half a mile a day. That's crazy. Yeah. From your from your, from your your bed to the bathroom to the kitchen you to get, your car. You get to the car, go to the office, get to the office, sit in your chair. You know, and that's that's a really pathetic mm-hmm. number. You know, and so the, the number of those who get out and run, that's great. But walking is amazing. Walking has so many health benefits. And weight, weighted walking... You mm-hmm. know, with the sidearm on, that's great. With with a, and, with and I a think rifle, the idea with a sidearm, with, with you know, that gives you the opportunity to not have to worry about your personal protection as much, um, to not focus on certain things, but to have that as you needed, so you can just mm-hmm. look around and enjoy what's there, mm-hmm. um, and take in and observe, and it's kind of a meditation, yeah, but absolutely. it gives you that freedom, right? Um, 
same thing with being well equipped and well trained in, in self defense. It's almost like a gun, mm-hmm. but it's only for the short radius. You know, so a sidearm is for a little bit longer radius. A, a uh, rifle is for an even longer radius. Mm-hmm. You know, so and we'll get into those types of guns and the fun stuff in the next segment. But I, I really think the point here is that having a sidearm, having a gun, um, a lot of people worry about. Oh man, if I've got it loaded, if I've got it, mm-hmm. get to the point where you just feel comfortable with it. Because it will take a load off of your shoulders. Um, and then get out walking. Mm-hmm. Get moving. You don't need to do high-intensity interval training unless you want to be stairs. like this crazy yoked-up dude. You know, well, I guess it depends on, really on what our, our, our goals are. You know, one of my most recent posts on Instagram was all of my shoes, the boots that, that I wear, right? Um, like the ones I have on now or nice, some nice Vasque boots. So basically I sent to my post was, okay, how many miles can you walk in your particular shoes? Uh, ladies, do you wear high heels to the office? And how far could you truly walk with those if there was an emergency? That's my wife wears flats all the time. Mm-hmm. Which still. You know, which is okay. Yeah. But Better she also wears sneakers heels. sometimes. But we've got an extra pair of shoes in the car for every car, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's the point. That's I wear boots that probably 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. When I'm not wearing boots, I'll, I try to go barefoot as much as possible because it's so good for your body. And, it, and there's a whole yeah. grounding principle mm-hmm. that we could go into another show, which is phenomenal on how grounding helps our bodies heal. Um, helps us psychologically helps us physiologically and there's a good study that goes along with that but going barefoot increases your body's ability to be Mm -hmm. um, resilient pressure points within your feet just Mm -hmm. like it within your hands that uh, affect other parts of your body so it's kind of hard to do in the winter though it is a little bit. I got eight inches of fresh snow today and that's not a place I want to walk barefoot right now and I must confess I have my feet are truly uh, pansies because I wear boots and shoes Mm -hmm. all the time because I want to be prepared I want to be able to have my boots if something happens you know, I'm I'm already ready. I don't have to say, oh wait, I got to put some the right shoes on. You know, I. What I'd, about the middle of the night when you're sleeping? Do you sleep with your boots on? Are you that guy? Nope. Okay. No Good comment. job. <laughs> no Good. comment. No, no um, comment. Come on. My, no, but my shoes stay by the side of my bed so that yep. I can slip them on quickly. Yep. And yeah, I rarely find myself walking from my bed to the kitchen in the middle of the night without putting my shoes on. For, for you know, because I'm that's just my mindset. Uh, anyway, so we're talking about. Walking with the gun. That's kind of what I, this, where I wanted to guide this conversation mm-hmm. this a little bit is, what, where was Thomas, Thomas Jefferson going with? Uh, going for a walk, obviously, is, has a lot of health benefits, um, especially back in the 1700s, right? You probably had to walk a long ways, and not everybody had horses or, or ways to get around. Uh, so walking is a, an important skill, an important, uh, I don't want to call it a skill, well, it's an important activity, acti- uh-huh. but learning how to shoot a gun, learning how to use a gun, I mean, mm-hmm. that's an important skill. And, so and I think that's what he was going to, is like, mm-hmm. you learn how to do that, your body, you know, tenses up when you shoot a gun, right? It re- it leans into it. You, you learn how to shoot and posture yourself, and that actually does do muscle strengthening. It also does mind strengthening, because mm-hmm. you're targeting, you're acquis- acquisitioning new targets. Yeah, and I think there's a lot we could definitely apply that way. You know, he said, it gives boldness, enterprise, and independence to the mind, yep. just by walking with your gun. And, of course, I think there's much more to it than that. Uh, but Well, before we hit the break, yes, this is a really cool quote that goes along with this. Go it's from it. an unknown Greek, and my wife's Greek, I so one. I love, I love this. this one. I will teach my children weapons and warfare so that they might teach their children science and law, so that they might teach their children art and literature. Absolutely. You know, by, by creating a foundation to create liberty, you can then do whatever you want with your mind. Perfect. And we'll continue on this topic after this break. Thanks for joining us here, and thank you for listening to Prepper Talk Radio, Radio for the Ready Minded. Stay tuned, and uh, please support our sponsors. All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking in there with us. Uh, you're listening to Scott and Shane. Shane and Scott here on Prepper Talk Radio, Radio for the Ready Minded. We're discussing uh, guns again this month, in particular long rifles, uh, long guns, rifles in particular. I said that. You do it like three times now. <laughs> Particularly should I, should long I rifles and uh, long guns, yeah. yeah I, I, I think that, you know, <laughs> there's a saying that says um, the only reason to have a, a handgun, a pistol, is to fight your way to your rifle. And I think that's very much to be learned, and that, I don't think it's entirely uh, truthful or, or factual. Well, but, it's uh, not applicable to all scenarios, but yeah, it is exactly. applicable in some, right? Okay. And that's a, that's a quote we've been getting from, uh, like, Jeff Kirkham with Ready Man and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the other guys that... that have actually been in battle. Been in battle. Who are, who are exactly military or warriors. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we want to start out this segment with a, a quick tip. And we want to try and do this a little more regularly um, because I love gear. Scott loves gear. We're gearheads. So here's one thing that 
I think you should have in all of your bug out bags, uh, your get home bag, whatever it is, is a portable, a folding hand saw. Yes. Now, what I mean by this is the one that I have, it's a Gerber. It's a sliding saw. So what it is, the blade actually slides inside of the handle, super lightweight, and it's like 10 bucks. Okay. You can go to pretty much anywhere Sportsman's, and it's between $9.99 to eleven ninety nine wherever you go. Okay. The Gerber sliding saw. For the, for the money, fantastic saw. I've had mine for years. Use it, abuse it, and it works extremely well. And the, the thing with saws is they are very efficient. Yes, I love my axes. I love my Swedish axes. They're fantastic. They have a purpose. They have a place. For a bug-out bag, an axe can be heavy. Well, mm-hmm. an axe is heavy. But to be able to you, – you can put this saw in your backpack, and, it, and you hardly even notice it's there, but it's super efficient. So I love this little Gerber saw, but I also love my Silky saw. And that's what I have is a Silky. I've, I, and I've actually – I got that because of my – my brother's a tree feller. Uh, mm-hmm. and does a lot of tree toppling. And uh, one of the things that he's – probably besides this chainsaw one of the things he uses the most is a silky mm-hmm. um it's it's a faster serration blade i've tested that against a bow saw and every time oh yeah it's about half as many strokes, swipe yeah. strokes across the wood uh, to now, get through it yeah now the silky are very high quality they are more expensive and uh, they're made in japan uh, and they come in various different sizes so from the small ones you can throw in your pack they mm-hmm. are all metal so they're going to be you know a little more durable than say the gerber um and they go all the way up to a thousand millimeters. So this this sucker is and that one's the katana, the katana one thousand. There's a katana five hundred. There's a six fifty. So it's like a, a big sword of a saw, uh, and they are amazing. They get to be expensive. You know, yep. You're spending anywhere from one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars for one of these katanas. I spent seventy nine on mine. I even bought a replacement blade just so I've got an extra. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is probably the easiest to use saw. It's fantastic. You know, yep. I let my scouts play with one, and they broke the blade because they were jerking around with it too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one um, I have is uh, about 14, 15 inch blade. But yeah. And it is a great all purpose uh, for both yard work as well as taking it out into the woods and cutting and down some trees. And for, Yeah, exactly. For, for what they do for you, they are, they are quite lightweight. And if you need to build a shelter quickly, yep. man, a saw does so mm-hmm. much and to help that. And it's safer than an axe as well. Mm-hmm. So there's my tip of the day here is get yourself a some kind of a folding saw to add to your bug out bag. Absolutely. Whatever bag you want to call Whatever it. Whatever bag you use. Put, put one in your car. Yes. Now, to continue on in the, the gun conversation today, mm-hmm. um, I like, as a Boy Scout, I, I love Lord Baden-Powell. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one of the quotes that he said is, make good, sh- good scouts of yourselves. Become good rifle shots so that if it becomes necessary that you can defend yourself, your families and your country, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, another one by uh, Machiavelli said, when you disarm the people, you commence to offend them and to show them that you distrust them, either through cowardice or lack of confidence. And both of these options generate hatred. Mm-hmm. Right now, we've got a crazy thing going on in the nation where people are trying to disarm other people. And, and the reality is we need to work on some other issues. Mm-hmm. Um, but those who use their guns, those who defend their guns, and those who like the liberty of being able to own those, you know, those, those are people we're talking to right now. Continue to use those. Continue to learn how to use those. That, that's what provides you liberty and freedom, true liberty. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing you know, I wanted to point out is uh, we've obviously gone away from this greatly over the years. You know, from the early years of the Boy Scouts, when mm-hmm. they promoted, and, and they still do to, to a certain extent, they still do promote uh, gun safety and going out and shooting. There's a gun range in every scout. Um, that's true scout camp I've ever mm-hmm. been to. Mm-hmm. Right. So they still continue on that. Um, obviously, they're not... Uh, teaching it as much or as boldly as they did before. Right. And I think, you know, that's something I'm instilling in my kids is the ability to, to defend themselves by whatever means, whether so it be firearms or knives, like we spoke last week, or self-defense. Is that where you learned to shoot was as a scout? Uh, no, my dad. Your dad? My dad. See, I wasn't fortunate enough. We didn't have guns growing up. Um, it was a gun, gun-free gun zone, gun-safe zone. Mm-hmm. It was like the, mm-hmm. yeah, insanity that's going on now in the world. Um, but it was more out of fear than out of any science-based right. information. Well, when I became my own man and grew up and moved out, and I, I was exposed to guns and scouts, um, and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. Then I, then I moved out and on my own, and eventually I was able to start acquiring my own guns because I always felt like there was going to be a need mm-hmm. um, for me to know how to use these things. 
And now my whole family's like, oh, yeah, we need to get guns. we got to do this. And we if you truly, learn how. truly understand what it is to be a patriot, what it is to be an American, you understand why the founding fathers, fathers – Added the, had the Second Amendment and there and promote guns just like Thomas Jefferson. Absolutely, we've got a call here in line four. Let's see what they've got to say. Hello, caller, you're uh, live here on Pepper Talk Radio. Did you have a? Can I? Yeah. Can okay. I call you back on the, during the break, please? Oh, you bet. Absolutely. Call me back during the break. Thank you much. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, um, we would love for you to participate in the call. Uh, we're we're going to get into now is we're going to talk about our top choices for. I guess we just call us preppers for preppers. Yeah. The, for the top guns necessary to really be equipped for, for after the SHTF scenarios, right? Okay. For, for, home, the for home defense, for personal defense, for hunting, uh, those types. And we would love for you to, to chime in. We want to hear what, what your favorite rifle is uh, and what you recommend that that we and other preppers get. So our number is 801-254-1640. Scott, you want to start us off there? You know, I, it, I've i got a list. I've got five, well, six different things listed here. but And we probably have the same ones on our list. A couple of them. We'll, we'll go off just the ones that I know that we're going to have the same. Is Number one is a 12-gauge a shotgun. Okay. Um, and if possible, one with a uh, interchangeable barrel from short to long. Okay. Because then okay. the short is your defensive barrel, and then when you're going to go hunting, you know, foul, you can swap it to the long barrel. Right. Otherwise, you need to have two different Otherwise shotguns. Otherwise, two, yeah. Because, uh, and so let's understand a, a uh, 12 gauge, a defensive shotgun is about a 16 inch barrel, minimum size barrel that's legal, a 16 mm-hmm. inch. And the reason is a longer barrel is hard to get around in your home, right? You're going to bump into things. And so you don't need a long barrel in, at close ranges to be effective. Right. But for hunting, that 16 inch barrel ain't going to hit squat. Right. It's, it's not going to be effective at, at. The spread widens up too fast to mm-hmm. do anything. Worth with it at any distance, any yeah. reasonable distance, hunting distance with for any what you might have turkeys or 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 duck or whatever. I mean, if you're shooting squirrel with a with a shotgun from 15 feet, I guess that's okay to use that. <laughs> you're more likely to hit it, but and there's not going to be anything left of it. Yeah, it's going to be destroyed. That's where you want to use some maybe bird shot. Yep, but I think I think the shotgun is such a versatile gun. Um, it's also it's simple mm-hmm. to learn how to use, and in particular a pump. Not necessarily a semi-auto, which are still fantastic, but I think if you're going going to get a shotgun, and the first your first one should be a pump for reliability. What's your argument? You're looking. I, I disagree. I think it's. Okay. I think it goes back to preference of what you feel more comfortable with. Um, yeah, I got a yeah. semi-automatic, mm-hmm. and the reason but for you're that is experience with it. I, well, it was, it's my first shotgun. Mm-hmm. Um, I've shot many shotguns before that, but I chose that because of the caliber of, I mean, the gun itself, I shouldn't say caliber, the quality of the gun Mm -hmm. was more important to me, um, and it was expensive. It was an expensive shotgun. So what brands do you recommend? Well, I got a Browning Maxxis. Okay. That's a nice, nice gun, and I've actually competed with it and taken second in tournaments, Mm -hmm. and I'm probably the least experienced shooter in the groups, but I've got a really good gun that helps my learning curve. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I like the semi-automatic because if I am hunting and three or four different birds go up in three or four different directions, I've got three shots quickly without quick, having without to having to reload. To cycle, you know, mm-hmm. cycling, mm-hmm. and then reacquiring my target. That takes some time off. And some will say, you know, for a defensive shotgun, that it's best to have a pump because then they can hear the sound of you racking that pump, and then oh, I'm going to be scared off and. Right, and uh, that's all you need to do. Sometimes, I don't agree, but uh, that is. I've got a military a buddy. Nice topic he, we could talk about. He'll argue against that, and he'll just say, "No, yep. the first thing you need to do is bl- shoot out one of the windows in your house, and everyone will hear that, mm-hmm. especially the bad guy." If someone's in your house and you and need if, some assistance, if yeah. they hear you shooting with a shotgun, they don't want to go anywhere near where that shotgun is. Hopefully, oh, and that well, should and be I, the case. I don't know anyone that has the lacking sense for that, but yeah, you, you, who knows. Mm-hmm. So and, and th- there's a lot of variables. I don't want to necessarily promote that, especially when you have near neighbors which are nearby, mm-hmm. homes which are nearby. You've always got to know what's beyond your shot. Right, so, exactly. So I think you're absolutely right. A shotgun is should be your very first, if not one of the very first, rifles you should own. As, and especially in 12-gauge. 20 are great for home defense. They really are. There's plenty of, plenty of power in a 20-gauge. 20, 20 yep. Um, and it's more manageable for... Women, I'm not going to... But 12-gauge, the reason I choose a 12-gauge is because there's more 12-gauge ammunition throughout the world. It's more common. It's more common. And you have a... a uh, Larger a, abundance of selection. A selection. There you go. From slugs to birdshot to buckshot to... to def- dragon's breath. To I mean, dragon's it's breath. It's crazy. To defensive loads. Absolutely. 
All right, cool. So shotgun check. Remington, Remington, eight seventy. There we go. Remington eight seventy or Mossberg five hundred. Those are my um, basic. They're inexpensive. Yeah, those are fantastic. And they're starter very guns. reliable. They're pump shotguns. Um, and you know, when it comes to firearms, here's I'm going to throw out this little caveat: is I don't like to spend a lot of money on firearms because I think there are things that are more important, like mm-hmm. food storage, like water storage, water storage, like being First out aid. of debt. Like uh, getting a bug out location. Yeah. However, um, so I, I, at this point, I'm not spending a lot of money on guns. It's I'm I'm more frugal that way. But there are a lot of great select selections, choices for guns that are inexpensive. So there's there's two bits there. All right. So what's should I give you my my first? Yeah. Go to the next one. Yeah. I, I I think the 12 gauge wouldn't be my very first selection. My very first one would be the Ruger 1022 22 okay. LR. I grew up shooting this thing. My dad, this is like you say, where did you learn to shoot? Uh, my dad had this Ruger 1022. He's had it for 40 plus years. Fantastic rifle. Of course, I have my own now. And as I, I bet g- you've got the 1022 takedown, though. I've, I have one of those as well. I love that gun. And yeah, you throw That's it in your backpack. And, and the reason I like the, ten, the 1022 in particular, it is a semi automatic. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not own a Bolt 22, which is on my list, but it's extremely reliable. And when it comes to 22, you know, it's inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Not as inexpensive as it used to be. True. But it can it is so versatile. Yes, you can kill deer with it. It's going to be a difficult shot or, <laughs> or tough, but you could hunt with it. Which then reminds us we need to practice, 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 practice. Exactly. Practice, Very practice. good. Get used to shooting. Get used to acquiring your targets and, and making good, clean shots. Absolutely. And then you could you could hunt squirrel with it and not mm-hmm. totally destroy your meal there. Absolutely. You could uh, You can use it for suppressing fire. You have a nice long uh, ma- magazine that holds 25 rounds. You can do cu- use it for cover, f- cover fire just to I make the noise. And I've got a lot of uh, – well, the funny thing is it doesn't make that much noise. It's ta 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 mm-hmm. Well, it's not even that. ta 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 But it works, mm-hmm. you know, and it. I've never had a problem with my 1022 oh, yeah. malfunctioning. S- exactly. It's Super one of the more easy to clean, reliable easy types to of take guns. care of. And uh, – and you know what I love about it is my kids can shoot it easily. It's, yeah, it's, it's quiet. the perfect rifle to to start uh, learning with, and also, like you say, when it's quiet, uh, the only firearm that can be truly silenced. There's suppressors and s- silencers, the same thing, but the only one that can be truly silenced is a 22. Mm-hmm. Everything else, still and maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, everything else is basically suppressed, brings the decibels down, so it's safe for you, for your ears, and that's really the the reason to have a suppressor because it doesn't make Make guns Well, that's silent. what a suppressor was designed for in the first place, was to take the the damage off of your ears. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to walk around having your your uh, earplugs in or your uh, your ear protection in that you, when you're out hunting or wherever you're shooting. You don't have to worry about that, and it takes the decibels down far enough that it doesn't injure your ears. It's not quiet by any means unless it's a twenty two. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so suppress I, 22, lots of fun. That's my actual number two. So it, what's your number two? Is it the 12, is it the shotgun? My number two would actually be a scout rifle. Scout rifle, like a 308? Like a 308, bolt, bolt action. Okay. Extremely reliable, uh, shorter barrel, so 16 to 18 inch barrel. Okay. Um, which still allows, and the 308 allows for medium to long range shots with, with good accuracy. But the shorter barrel allows for use in the home uh, at closer distances, uh, where it's meant to be more of a defensive weapon. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm going with all this. I, I don't have a long-range gun as one of my top five guns because I, I think defensive is more is not necessarily long-range. We could argue that right. topic. Well, uh, a good, well uh, it's definitely offensive. Hop in the audio there. Uh, but a good three oh eight. I mean, you can get 500 yards on there. You could. It's not, not that great of a shot. Even with at a that 16 point. or 18 inch barrel, you can, you can still do reach it. Reach out to 600 yards um, and, and hit your target. But the 308 is a tumbling round when you get that far. It's it's going to lose a lot of its. Um, and it, it, of course, depends on the, wind the quality of the, of the load that problems. you're you're shooting and such. But the big thing is, is it's 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 also something you can use for hunting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I've got a my my favorite one. I've actually shot Remingtons and I've got and Rugers and. And a couple other different ones, but and those ended up being my top two choices. And I ended mm-hmm. up going with the Ruger Scout bolt action. Okay, yeah, um, the, the Ruger Gunsight Scout. That's mm-hmm. exactly that's my my second rifle. Love it. It's very comfortable. Um, it's easy to use. I got it fluted and other fun little things, but mm-hmm. it works great. Um, it's very reliable. 
Um, both actions are very reliable. Mm-hmm. And what I love about the, the scout, pretty much any scout rifle, is they have steel sights. Mm-hmm. They're not just, you have to mount a scope on it or you, 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 know, you have no sights. Uh, the scout rifle is, has steel sights built in, which uh, that is where you should start. You should need to learn to shoot that rifle with your steel sight, yep. and then upgrade to your to an optic of some of some sort. And then you know optics can fail, you know, steel sights can too, but they're more, obviously more robust than an optic. So in a, in an SHTF situation, uh, it's going to be a lot more robust to have steel sights, and you're not going to be affected by weather or mud or whatever. Mm-hmm. Getting yeah, your, getting your optic. Learn how to use that, and, and and in the next segment, we're talking a little bit more about kind of maintenance and storage, but. Understanding how to use and understanding how to maintain these is key because when you need to fix it, you've got to be able to do it yourself, and you can't just go to a shop and have things fixed. Exactly. Right? Um, so understand how everything works and how everything comes together and take it apart. Practice taking it apart, mm-hmm. cleaning it, putting it back together. Having and yeah. that, that's when we, we can talk more, I guess, after the break here about what, one of the next rifles on my, on my list. Okay. Which um, I don't know if we want to go there just yet. Uh, so we're talking, we're talking 308, a uh, Gunsight Scout. Uh, as my second choice and here's our music and we'll get into their next selections and we would love to hear which rifles you guys prefer for your SHTF rifle your, that one rifle you guys would choose thanks for listening we'll catch you after the break alright welcome back thanks for listening to Scott and Shane here on Purple Talk Radio we're talking about uh, guns here uh, last week of the month uh, from our gun month and I think it's quite appropriate uh, we chose this um before the month started, we s- decided to talk about guns. Yes, we did. So it was no coincidence with uh, current events uh, that we chose to talk about guns in particular. And I, I think the main thing I want to try and get across uh, in making this month gun month is that it is – they're connected directly to freedom. Okay. Guns, firearms, and freedom – Go hand in hand. And I'm talking about real freedom. I'm talking about not what we have today. Well, let's see. What was the – oh, man, I'm trying to think the, the old Wild West quote. Um, Which one are you talking about? about here? Men be, cult made them equal or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, not all, all men were equal or something. God made cult. man, but cult made him equal. Cult made him equal. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, but that's absolutely accurate. accurate I, I, think, I think the point that we're really trying to make – Really, two points this month. One is it's necessary to be to maintain your freedom, to maintain your liberty, to keep a rifle, mm-hmm. to keep a way to defend yourself, and your, and, and your country, and your country, mm-hmm. and two to know how to use these tools because you can hunt for sport, you can hunt for life, mm-hmm. right? You can target shoot for sport, you can. There's so many sports around. I mean, even the Olympics has the biathlon right mm-hmm. now, and those guys are legit mm-hmm. shots. Mm-hmm. They're oh, yeah. huffing and puffing on Nordic skis, and then they've got to stop, control their breathing, and make five shots in a row, and then sprint off again and on their talk skis. Talk about an expensive rifle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. $10,000 entry-level price for those yeah. guns. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and those guys are amazing shots and, and gals. Especially um, when your heart rate is up like that. That is very difficult to make those kind of shots. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Some, some serious skill and practice. Well, hey, our phone's ringing. Let's, let's see what they've got to say. Let's roll the dice here. Hello, uh, you're live here on Purple Talk Radio. Did you have a comment for us? Yeah, I, I, I can remember a few years back, probably, probably I'm going like five years back, I remember when the Mental Health Association was trying to take people's guns away because mm-hmm. they had children that were disturbed, and it wasn't the guns. It was uh, the people who are supposed to put the guns where the children can't get them. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you went to a doctor, you know, if he thought you were a little nutty or something like that, mm-hmm. he would try to take you right away to not have a gun. Mm-hmm. And they are, continue to do these, make these kinds of efforts yep. any way they can. Obama yeah. put one of those yeah, back PTS, in the past. Yeah, all that, who we do it. But, you know, my grandfather had a, and my dad did too, they always had a shotgun. Because mm-hmm. I lived in Vermont mm-hmm. and out in the woods. Yep. And we did have, you know, fears, and once in a while that would come down. But we were taught from an early age not to touch the gun. But mm-hmm. another thing that they did, the reason why it didn't touch the gun, my grandfather used to take us out 
And he started training us with a BB gun mm -hmm. and tin cans. Me too. That's where I started. Huh? That's where I started as well with BB guns. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, once you got the, the, the you know, the bill for the BB gun and you shot tin cans, and, you know, they gradually mm -hmm. weaned you to a rifle. To of course, I could never mm -hmm. shoot a rifle. I only weigh 95 pounds and I'm 4'11". <laughs> I mean, it was send me, you know. So you're you know, not out there handling your 50 cal. You're <laughs> so a handgun would work for me. But, I mean... But, I mean, it, it's, it's about respect. Absolutely. That's a great word. I think that's one of the most profound things we've had. Thank you for sharing that. I, it's the respect for the power of these things, the respect for that's the right. danger of these things. Yeah, the and it's respect for the functionality. Else, the respect for the player, mm -hmm. the respect for your country, the respect for your elders. But also, I also mean, remember that a, an armed society is a polite society. It's a respectful yeah. society. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it has to do not with... Just because you know what guns, what some people think they are, it's what they truly actually are. They are they are tools. They are more than just. Uh, and I pre I'm not thinking. I'm I'm lacking on the right word here, but uh, it, they're more than what most people think. Who, who are trying to disarm us? What they are? They're much more than that. And I think that's what I'm trying well, to get through this history. conversation. Well, there are history. You never hear us yes. talk about history. They're history, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they used them in the Revolutionary War, right? I mean, you know, I mean, you, you know, it's like I buy my door. Everybody laughs, but by my door, don't laugh. On this shelf, I have this shelf, right? And mm -hmm. and by my door, I got a ball bat, okay? Mm -hmm. And beside the ball bat, I got a bottle of water and pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now I'm mean. I'm gonna spray your face <laughs> and I'm gonna hit you with the bat. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. try not to shoot you, okay? Yeah. But <laughs> I'll call. Well, thank you, Elaine, <laughs> oh, for the call. It's a great topic. Thanks, I, I, thanks just, for calling. I just thought that's a good idea, a good old-fashioned wooden bat. Yes. Definitely. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thanks, Elaine. You Appreciate know, the call. It's interesting as we continue on this month. I mean, everyone's got a different opinion. Um, your opinion is different than mine. But the one thing we, we agree on is that this is our right, mm -hmm. and we should be allowed to exercise it. Um, the Second Amendment is a provisional amendment um, to stop the government from the possible mm -hmm. possibility of a doomsday scenario. I mean, it's it's really a doomsday scenario thing. Mm -hmm. What the reality is is it's it's saying government, you can't make a rule on this. This is our right. This is our right. Mm -hmm. It's not your right. It's not the government's right. It's each individual person's right. And as a state, it's our right to have a militia, standing militia. You know, that's all been convoluted over the years. But mm -hmm. God grants liberty only to those who love it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And those who love it are the ones that are going to protect it. I mean, the quote is um, from Daniel Webster. God grants liberty only to those who love it and are always ready to guard and defend it. I look back, one of the best history lessons I love is, is and the movie made it famous, is the 300, mm -hmm. you know, Sparta. Yeah. 300 of the greatest warriors went on a walk with mm -hmm. King Leonidas. Actually, 299. With their swords and their shields. Their and swords their and their shields yeah. to keep Xerxes and his, his uh, world domination at bay. Mm-hmm. That's what changed the tide of him taking over all those countries and destroying and putting everybody into slavery. And that's a true purpose for us to have our long rifles. Our and long that's guns. where everyone gets the phrase Molan Lave. Yeah. You know? We've got another call here. Let's go ahead and, and take this. Hello, you're uh, live here on Prepper Talk Radio. Well, that was quick. Hey, you yeah. know the rest of that quote, which was actually formulated by the science fiction writer Robert Heinlein, the whole thing goes, an armed society is a polite society. Manners are good when one may have to back up his acts with his life. I love yes. it. Yes. I love it. Thank you absolutely. for bringing that up. That is fantastic. Uh -huh. that, that's absolutely, absolutely correct. You have to be able to stand for what you truly believe in up to the giving of your own life. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for that. I sure appreciate your call. All right, let's uh, let's try and uh, we got uh, just a few minutes here left. Let's try and uh, let's hit that last the last couple of guns. Yeah, last few guns here. Uh, number three on my list was the twelve gauge, mm -hmm. but now that I'm thinking about it more, um, and, and with Elaine calling in, you know, her grandpa having a shotgun. I think that was absolutely true. I think most of these families, their first gun they had in their house was a shotgun mm -hmm. because it's so versatile. They could hunt with it, but they could also defend themselves with it as well. So yeah. maybe that shotgun should be a little bit higher on my list. I think. I, that's, I put mine in number one because it's so versatile, mm -hmm. right? The 1022 takedown, 1022 awesome gun. I love it. Uh, the the 308, you know, it's a bit, it's a bigger, mm -hmm. it's a bigger, batter stick, yeah. right? Um, and then I would put since we, I mean, I have handguns too on my list. I didn't know we were just going rifles yeah, we're just today, rifles. but yeah. um, hand, you know, handguns I love. But 
when it go, comes to the next rifle, I'm torn. I used to be solid, like, nope, AR-15. Mm-hmm. I'm torn between the AK and the AR platforms. Mm-hmm. They both have good uses. Mm-hmm. Um, the AR platform, 223, small round, 556, small round. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe the uh, AR-10, go to the 308. Right. Go to 308, right. 762 by 51. Uh, so, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and then the AK platform. Which is the 762 7, by 69. 32 by 39. So it's a 30 caliber, but it's a smaller casing. Yep. Still very effective, not as very mean much round. Of long, yeah. Um, and it's an easier gun to take down, strip, field strip, clean, take care of than it and is that than round an is, AR. And that's absolutely true, much more reliable. And the, the, the problem I have with, I guess, the AR-15, which, you know, is on my list. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I don't love care em. for the AK as much just because it's not as, as I don't know, as, as functional, as versatile. I guess okay. the word is not as versatile. But it is more complicated, and thus it is less reliable than an AK. Right. And I think all of you out there, whether you're AR or AK lovers, you would agree this with me This could there. open up a huge debate, too, yeah. because there are people with different different types of ARs have different reliability mm-hmm. issues, right? Well, the, So the, this can open up a whole worm mm-hmm. can of worms of, of conversation. But I think the big thing is, is have one of those. Mm-hmm. And why I think that's important is because that's a true weapon, mm-hmm. right? It, it graduates to a true weapon. Someone would call it, some people would call it a weapon of war. Which, why would civilians need to own weapons? That's not our discussion today. Right. The discussion I- today is we are should be allowed, and I don't like to use that word, we... It is our right. Have, it is our right to do you, by any means to defend ourselves. Yes. Period. Whether it's an AK, whether it's an AR-15, whether it's a, a BMG-50 caliber, even, you know, if we have our own jets, you know, with machine guns. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that should be, wow. truly be our right. Um, okay, other things are arguable, but we're not gonna, we're not going that we, way. We can go all kinds yeah. of different directions. But you know, I think one thing we wanted to touch on today also is cleaning and storage and so forth of, of firearms. Now, when you compare the AK and the and the AR, the AK is is going to take the AR any day o- on reliability and cleaning, ease of cleaning and, and maintaining because you just have to do very little. To we it don't to need keep, any to tools, keep it working, right? To mm-hmm. to take it to strip it. Um, an AR, you need a couple tools. It, it's very complicated yeah it's difficult it's to engineered clean. beautifully mm-hmm. but it if it's requires, clean requires yeah. yeah it requires a uh, more thorough method for cleaning mm-hmm. um, because things don't come apart as easily as an as an ak well it's just it's just designed differently mm-hmm. designed right? completely differently but and all guns need to be cleaned all guns need to be maintained and all guns need to be stored correctly and uh, let's just make this perfectly clear the ar and ar-15 stands for armalite Yep, Armalite, not a sort rifle. Armalite is the original designer of the of the AR of that particular platform, which has then, of course, been you know copied and licensed and whatever. Just like the the IBM computer, just like the Apple, well, Apple computers still Apple. Just like jeans, just right? like jeans, just like Levi's or jeans or Every, yep. depending on where you go in the world, it might be called something different. Levi's is probably the most most used. Just a brand. It's a brand, brand, right? brand name. But for, it's their for, jeans. For jeans. Um, if, when I lived in Idaho and, and when I lived in Wyoming, everyone talked about Wrangler. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you get some gra- Wranglers? Wranglers? It doesn't matter if they're a Wrangler brand or yep. not. It's Wranglers. Yep. AR, it's it's what used to be specifically Armalite, is now mm-hmm. an entire platform across mm-hmm. the board. Mm-hmm. Which, with multiple calibers, whether it be the, the 556223, uh, the 300 Blackout, uh, the 6.5 Creed Mortar. I mean, there's so many different calibers that can be made into this particular AR platform. Yeah. So, And that comes down to really what you're going to use it for. And we wanted to talk about hunting, uh, what what rifles would be appropriate for hunting, as well as self-defense. I think the AR is extremely versatile that way, as long as you maintain it, keep it clean and keep it lubed, that you can hunt with it mm-hmm. with with the larger calibers. Yeah, in the a- say, not say really the, <laughs> Exactly, like varmints, you could shoot you yeah. coyotes and varmints. Uh, but you could go with an AR-10, a larger platform, which is the, the 30 caliber, yep. the uh, 308 or 300 or whatever, and use that for hunting and make it a, a, you make that be your one gun. You know, just like the the saying goes, if 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 a man has to, has one gun, he probably knows how to use it. Yeah. So decide what that is for yourself and get good at it. Well, you if you can't have get a bunch one of, of those guns. two, and and you maybe you're a little you don't have as much money, but you'd like something in the 30 caliber. Um, you cannot go wrong with a Mosin Nagant. Absolutely, no, absolutely. That's on my list as well. I, I, I it's on my list to get. Mm-hmm. I've shot one. Um, it is fantastic for how old it is. Yeah. How reliable it is. And is the ammo is very inexpensive. Brilliant. Very inexpensive. You can get one for under under two hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and you can get uh, five hundred rounds for probably about the same. For under five hundred bucks, you have a fantastic long range rifle. 
and but it requires a little more uh, a little more upkeep. It, it is has a corrosive round, and and so you've got to clean it after every time you shoot it. Yep. Um, and uh, but it is actually one of the more popular rifles worldwide. Yeah. So. Well, then I, I think for our, like the final gun, I've got to give a little bit of an honorable mention to. Okay. Um, it's the most affordable gun to get into as soon as it launches that spans all of these. Mm-hmm. We talked to Tim yep. Ross in the beginning of the month, and I'm like, I kind of got to give him an honorable mention here on the scavenger. If you were to get one gun, maybe that's the right one to get It into. might be. I, yeah. you know, I can't wait to get my hands on one and test it out and really know, and then we'll let you know once we know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wish we could continue on with this discussion. It's been a lot of fun. We had a lot more things we wanted to talk about. We'll try and uh, put some things up on our social media. Please check us out on Facebook preppertalkradio.com as well as you can listen to our podcast on iTunes and iHeart and Spreaker and our website as well. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week.